Welcome back. I'm that Halloween movie collector, Pat. And we're going to take a look at what I'm calling Who Did It Better? Where I'm going to take, basically, well, this episode is going to be comparing two Michael Myers actors. And other future episodes, maybe I'll do two Jason actors and compare them from different movies. And, you know, it could be two Batmans or something in the same vein as that. But, of course, I'm the Halloween collector. Halloween is my world. I figured let's start with probably the two hardest ones. Who did it better? Nick Castle, the original shape from Halloween, or Dick Warlock, the shape from Halloween 2? While I love both versions, there are big differences between the two of them. Controversial at the time, still controversial to this day on how they were played. The only saving grace is if you look at um, Halloween 2, Dick Warlock was Michael Myers for Halloween 2. You look at Halloween... Those that are Halloween fanatics like myself that know everything about the movie, there were no less than, I believe, five different people that wore the mask in that movie. So, but we're only going to do the Nick Castle portion. I'm not going to go do the Tommy Lee Wallace, with, which is the closet scene. And, um, you know, Jim Winburn, when he was shot and falling off the balcony. Don't need to get that too specific. Something minute we can do down the road where we're doing comparing the actors or maybe ranking the Myers actors. But for now, let's just do who did it better and let's see where we come out. As you know, in Halloween, in Halloween 2, actually through the Halloween franchise, from day one, uh, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill referred to Michael Myers as the shape, simply because his theory was he sat in the shadows. He lit him in blue lighting. And it was supposed to be creepy, atmospheric, and it did its job, that's for damn sure. So it was a build of a specific person. Now, granted, if those that understand why Nick Castle was chosen, he was simply Mike, um, John Carpenter's friend, help, hanging out on set, watching him make the movie because he wanted to start his own career. And he said, hey, why don't you wear the, since you're here, why don't you wear this mask and walk around and, and be the killer? Because <laughs> there was no lines. Nobody needed to see him. It was perfect. So uh, can ask for a better being at the right place at the right time. So the shape is basically the silhouette of Michael Myers as the killer. And that carried over into Halloween 2 as well because Dean Cundy, the cinematographer, the great cin cinematographer that really framed the look of Halloween 1 and 2, fortunately, like I said, he was in Halloween 2 as the cinematographer. So a lot of the visuals and the way it was lit carried right over. You can start Halloween 1 and you can play Halloween 2 and you can put them together as one long movie really if you wanted to that, that's, what I, that's what I love about them that's one of my top two favorites but the shape itself so when you see scenes like Michael Myers where Laurie sees him standing outside her in, in the yard Mr. Riddle's yard you see that silhouette of what he looks like and that's in broad daylight too which is odd You'll, you see later on where <clears throat> actually before that Lori sees him standing next to the station wagon when she's looking out of her, of her schoolroom. And you see, you see him sit right above the top of the station wagon. Uh, another silhouette point would be where um, Tommy is looking uh, across at the Wallace house and, and seeing him standing on the outside, which is Nick Castle. It's been proven. It's not Deborah Hill. For those that watched that documentary and it confused the shit out of people, it is Nick Castle. It's been proven. So it's not Deborah Hill. But that silhouette, it, it's just an eerie look or one of my favorite scenes in the movie where Annie is on the phone talking to Laurie. And as she's panning from side to side, you're seeing Michael through the uh, French doors. Masterful. Just absolutely amazing. Now you can compare that, contrast that, who did it, not necessarily who did it better, because in theory, Nick Castle created the shape with the way he moved. I mean, yeah, he had direction from John Carpenter, but just the way he was built. Now you look at Halloween 2, there's a lot of great visuals where the shape was still the shape. So you could look at Halloween 2, 
where let's see where there's a good moment where you see him in the background which is always the creepiest part when you're always looking to see where he pops up and he's lurking in the shadows that's what i miss from a lot of the the newer ones halloween 2018 almost got it back but look at the scene where he kills um Sa uh, sally the girl after he's shot you know falls off the balcony and, and that's where it picks up in halloween 2 and bracket and loomis are looking for him and he sneaks into the one house next to the Elrod's house and you see while she's on the phone in the background blurry background you see him come in and it could very well have been the castle because the way it was framed it looked great or even when he jumps out from the side when she's looking to see who opened the door and he kills her it's menacing and that shape is still there granted the face looked different in halloween 2 obviously because the castle had a longer face the castle stretch as they called it for the masks and Dick Warlock had a much more rounded face. That's why it looked a little bit different. And it was the same mask from one movie to the next. It was one of them because there were three of them made for the original movie. And um, so you, you, other scenes where you, you can uh, think of the shape in Halloween 2 where, um, let's see, where he pops up in the rearview mirror when she, when uh, Nurse Karen shows up at Halloween at, at the Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, you see him there. It's menacing when he's standing in the nursery while Mrs. Alvis and, and Nurse Karen are, are talking. You see him in the background, which is menacing. The shape is still there. He still had that. So it's it's so to sit there and say who did it better. It's tough because that's why this one's going to be real tough for me because there's things about it. so as far as I will sit there and say, as far as who is the better shape, I'll give the edge to Nick Castle a little bit more because he created that. I mean, granted, Dick Warlock admitted he didn't even watch it. He really didn't emulate anything. That's why he was very robotic. He did, a, did his own thing. But I would just edge it out because it was just a little... Actually, I don't know. If, if you say uh, visually, I would say Nick Castle visually looked better. Dick Warlock looked more menacing because honestly I would Halloween scared me when I first saw it in 1980 I was eight years old so 81 Halloween 2 was the first Halloween I saw in the theater opening weekend and I was so I was nine years old it was a year later and that movie Halloween 2 admittedly scared me more than Halloween that scared the shit out of me especially I had been in the hospital not that long before that with a pneumonia and I just thought back to that so I thought it was a little bit more scary Halloween 2 believe it or not because uh it was just so dark in that in the hospital and so eerie and so creepy. And then I love the soundtrack more probably in the original, but in the Halloween two, the, the where it was a little bit more of a keyboard synth actually was a little made your skin crawl a little bit. So I would so if I looked at the shape, I would probably give the actual shape look to Nick Castle and who was a little bit more scary as the shape, I would honestly probably give it to Dick Warlock. One of the great things about Michael Myers' character is his movement. Now, Nick Castle, I believe from watching one of the documentaries, his father was, um, or I think worked for Fred Astaire. He was like a coordinator, dance coordinator. So he had a fluid movement that just worked perfectly. He just, John Carpenter said, just walk. What it, you're doing it fine, just walk. So that Castle Myers walk is is the one that everybody tried to emulate. And James Jude Courtney knocked it out of the park and he got it down pretty, he got it down really good for the three movies, the three Blumhouse movies. So that walk to me, not much to say to me, it's my favorite where he's, you know, he's walking from the Wallace house over to the Doyle house while she's banging on the door. I mean, and you could see him walking menacing, just like one thing is focused. I'm going to come there and I'm going to fuck her up. That is just the best thing ever. So the, yeah, that walk, or when she, he comes out of the shadows, when, after she discovers Annie over in uh, the Wallace house, and he comes and stabs her in the arm, and she goes over and she looks up, and he's at the top of the steps. And as he's walking down those steps, that movement, killer. Now, in contrast to Halloween two. 
Dick Warlock was not that bad, but he was a little bit too slow, a little bit too robotic. I've heard over the years, you know, people chatting and arguing back and forth and like, well, he was injured. He would probably move a little bit slower. I get it, but we're not dealing with reality here. This is, you know, this is fantasy land with the boogeyman. So I, it's a little bit too robotic. But it, it's also creepy in its, in its own right, too, because he's almost like a zombie, you know, with the part, part where he is chasing her after um, he kills, um, was it was it Nurse Janet? Where, you know, the sticks her up with the freaking scalpel, starts chasing her. And as he's walking, it's just like he's in a daze. It's very robotic. It's still menacing and creepy, so it does give you the, the chills. But I would have to give it to Nick Castle because it was a little bit too robotic for my taste. I did like, I thought it was a little bit more menacing the way Nick Castle did it. Now, their physical movements. Okay, not just the walking, them standing and, and lurking in the shadows. The physical movements were, you know, pretty, not so, so far off. I mean, if you look at Nick Castle as the shape killing Annie in the car, he's just choking her. He's just aggressive and he eventually slices her throat. When he's choking Linda, killing Linda, you know, he's very aggressive and that looks great or... One my favorite scene in the entire franchise when he kills Bob in the kitchen, pins him pins him up on the wall with a knife, and the the creepy way he just looks at his stands back and looks at his work. One of the most brilliant things Carpenter came up with was like, yeah, just stand there and look at it. Creepy as hell. Now contrast to Halloween two with with Dick Warlock, you have uh, menacing as well because you know it was great visual when he killed uh, Sally in the house right outside the Elrod house. When he kills um, um, Mr. Garrett with the hammer to the head, or probably the most iconic kill scene in in, in there, Nurse Karen, when he's he's drowning her and all the her skin's melting off, and he, and if and if you go back and watch that, it's weird. But it almost looks like his face is like this, like mean, the way Dick Warlock had it was wearing it. Very, it's hard to make a mask look like that because it's supposed to be just blank and featureless. But if you look, I will say this, I'll give Dick Warlock that credit. I guess maybe because it was a little stressed over his face because he had a more rounded face. When he, well, I guess while he was getting aggressive during those scenes, you could sort of look like the mask is like given an angry face. Go back and watch it. Yeah, now I've watched it a million times. That's why I've noticed that. Or even towards the end when he's, when he gets shot and the marshal goes down and, to check on, and he slices the marshal's throat. The, the, just the the creepy way he did it, it just drops him and just stands straight up. It, great. Dick Warlock did do a great job. Or if you ever watch the television version, which is hilarious, where he's just like bouncing them up and down and like sort of like snaps his neck or something like that, if you've ever seen the television cut. Because the television cut, they don't show him getting his, his throat slit. So I would give the... Uh, this one's a tough one because it's pretty dead on. They're both pretty menacing and brutal when they were killing. So I just have to call it a tie on this one because I I don't say, think either one was better than the other. It was just pretty straightforward. Now, as far as the look of the mask, well, they're, they're pretty similar, but very distinct. If you look at the, if you do watch it, especially it's harder because there's so many different looks of the mask in the first one, depending on who was wearing it. But in the, in the original one, it, was the OG, of course, you know, a lot of that blue lighting hiding in the shadows, and it just looked fantastic, you know, especially the the point, the best part where you really see uh, the Myers mask is after he kills Linda, and Laurie's talking to him on the phone, and as he's standing up and he puts the phone to his ear, that's when you get to see the great visual of the mask, and that, I remember to this day, how that sent chills down my spine when I first saw it. And other scenes in the movie, well lit with the blue lighting in the, in the background. Now, in contrast to Halloween 2, Halloween 2, same thing. They did a great job. It was the same mask, much to people's dismay. Obviously, it's just a little tattered over the years. And there was always that story about how it got so smoked up from being underneath um, the bed of Deborah Hill, which we found out to be untrue because apparently Nick Castle, if you go back and watch the latest episode of the thing with two heads, he had Dick Warlock and Nick Castle. And Nick Castle said it was his mask because Deborah Hill came to him. And he just never got it back. He lent it to them and just never received it again. <laughs> so, and of course, Dick, many years later, Dick Warlock sold it. So, great episode. Go check that out. So, I, 
it looked good in Halloween too because there it wasn't admittedly not as much blue lighting. There was a lot of darker lighting. There's the scene where he pops out from the from the side of the building when Laurie's is, gets out of the car when she was hiding and it's lit in red. And there's even when he was being um, when he was chasing her and going through the hallways. There was really no blue lighting. There was a little reddish hue. So it did look menacing and creepy. And you, you can see the distinct looks when you look at a lot of the masks, which I have all over the place. You know, they're all behind me. And especially with Tick, Trick or Treat Studios, they put out multiple versions of the mask based on the way they looked in a specific scene. You know, there's the Elrod mask. There's the, the, the hospital mask. There's all different versions. And the same thing with a lot of the custom mask makers. Based on the way it was look and way it looked and the way it was lit in specific scenes, you'll get those masks. So in this case, this is this is another one where it's I would probably give it to Nick Castle. I'd give it to the, the first movie. The blue lighting to me was a little bit more eerie. Granted, like I said, Halloween 2 really scared the shit out of me. I'm not gonna lie, the way it was lit, but I'd have to give it to that. And how could we forget in this day and age of horror conventions and comic cons where you get to meet all these great people from your from your movies, especially you know over the last ten years, Halloween has just boomed beyond beyond what I ever thought it would ever become when I became a fan of the collector years ago. So you can meet every one of these people. So you get I've met Nick Castle, I've met Dick Warlock. So who embraced their legacy better? Now this I would have to say. Is this is easily a toss up and a tie because you meet Nick Castle, he's very friendly, down to earth, very humble, embraces his legacy, appreciates all the fans. You know, he's still to this day floored that you know people you know feel that he's so beloved for what he did in that movie 1978. So, yeah, he's great. And then, and you can do it on the other hand, too. Dick Warlock, you know, just saw him this past uh summer last year at uh, Monster Mania and talk to him and chat with him. It's super nice and same thing, embraces it, loves, gets a kick out of everybody that still appreciates what he did after all these years in, the, in that role. And I'm also a fan of Halloween 3. So, you know, I t chat Halloween 3 with him as well because I love Halloween 3 and he was, you know, he was the assassin in Halloween 3. You can't, you can't miss that. So, that right there, that, yeah, I think I said, this was a tough one. I should have started with an easier one. Because I'd have to say that as a tie to it, because they both really embrace what they did. They embrace their legacy of these movies very equally. I can't even say one's more than the other. Because you've met, you've admittedly, met people over the years that are that that are good and some not so great. Admittedly, most of the people from the Halloween franchise are pretty humble and very cool to meet. So I really can't say much, you know, bad about that. I a few people over the years that are like, yeah, they, they just care about your money. And just give me the money, sign this, and walk away. But not these two guys. They're they're just they embrace it, they love it, they're humbled by it, and they really respect the the fans. So that would have to be it. I call that even. So overall, these are the criteria and the specifics I was thinking of when I was trying to come up with this concept. So overall, it's this is a tough one because they both did it really, really well. I mean, on one hand, you could probably give it to Dick Warlock because he pretty much did everything in Halloween 2. Nick Castle, you know, he was there. He was primarily Myers for most of the movie, but there was several other people that did stand in for him for specific scenes. One in particular was one of the, one of the best scenes in the franchise, which is the closet scene, which was actually Tommy Lee Wallace. Or the unmasking scene, which was Tony Moran. Or you look at where he falls off the balcony. He's getting shot and falls off the back the balcony at the end of the movie. It's Jim Winburn. So, yeah. So, in hindsight, if you look at it that way, yeah, Dick Warlock would win because he did the movie. But I would have to give it... I edged out Nick Castle for the simple reason that he really was the originator through no fault of his own. Just because of the way he walked and the way he, he just glided. So I'd have to give it out to him. And my only critique, which is what, what I said earlier about Dick Warlock, is the little bit of robotic movements. Now, if I was John Carpenter on that set as a producer and Deborah Hill, I would have been like, you know what, go back and watch the way he, Nick walked and just get a little bit more of that Nick Castle gliding movement. Not so much the robotic, 
but you know, it's neither here nor there now. I'm not. This is not a knock on Halloween Two whatsoever. It's my second in the franchise. I love it to pieces. First one I ever saw in the theater. So I would just edge out Nick Castle a little bit with that. Now, maybe I'll do a couple more down the road where, the, where it's a lot easier. Because if you want to sit there and say, okay, who was the better Myers? You know, Chris Durand, H2O, or you look at uh, or Don Shanks from Halloween 5. I mean, stuff like that I can... And I'm not going to re- reveal it is because I'll just give it away. But I can easily compare other ones. These two were dead. These two were hard. And... In, in, Going forward, you know, I guess a real other good matchup would be Tyler Mayne and James Jude Courtney because James Jude Courtney was great, you know, easily great. And Tyler Mayne was great, too. So that that would be another tough one to do. So maybe I'll uh, keep that one in the back burner. I don't want to do back-to-back Myers ones. Probably look for some other ones. And if you have any suggestions, by all means, let me know down below. Come up with who do you think might have done it better. And it could be actors. It could be directors because you, you look at somebody who... Directed an original, like, say, just throw Halloween as an example out there. Who did it better, John Carpenter in Halloween or Rob Zombie in Halloween? Well, that's a no-brainer, but that's just simply an example. You know, because there's plenty of people that did remakes and people that did um, sequels to the movies that weren't necessarily the original directors. So this this opens opens up a world of possibilities of who did it better. So I appreciate you sitting through my, my Halloween rant. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Do me a favor, hit that like button, which is right around there. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to go check if you're into Halloween, which basically this was the whole premise of this particular uh, episode. If you're into Halloween, you want to learn more about all the collectibles I have behind me, go to my Halloween uh, collectors page, which is on Instagram, that Halloween movie collector, where my collection is and give updates about this channel and just all sorts of fun stuff. If you're into Halloween collectibles, that's the place to go. I'm also on Twitter at that Halloween movie collector. Go check it out on Twitter world. If you're a collector and you're in Facebook land, go to my collectors group, which is Halloween and Michael Myers collectors group. Where you find out anything that's going on in the world of Halloween. There's people buy, sell and trading, a lot of masks in there, custom masks, rehauls. That's a good community of people and a great place to hang out. We will be announcing a new podcast and, and new uh, movie watch alongs on this channel in the next week or two. So Stay tuned for that. Halloween Collectors Podcast on hold for now. Maybe we'll revisit it in the future, but some new things are going to be popping up on this channel, so I hope you come back and check it out. There you have it. Who did it better? Let me know below. Did you think that uh, Nick Castle did it better? Or did you think Dick Warlock did it better? I know it's a tough one, especially if you're hardcore Halloween fans, but I'm interested to see what people would say. Because I know there's a few people who have friends that will say Halloween too is the better movie than Halloween 1. And I have a lot of friends that will say Halloween 4 is the best of, of the bunch. So, and if you're in that group, that and that's cool. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. This is not gospel. I'm a Halloween fanatic. I'm a lot older, so I started way back in the eight, in 1980. So for me, it's 1 and 2 at the top of the helm. But other people come in at different parts of the franchise and that may be their particular favorite because that's when they got introduced to it. So if you say, well, I like part four and I think George Wilbur was better, you know? Okay, that's your opinion. By all means, do me a favor. Com- comment below because I- I'd be curious to hear it. But thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other content on the channel if you're interested. A lot more stuff, cool stuff coming down the road. And this was a lot of fun. I hope you did enjoy it and I will talk to you soon.